Hey, I'm Bracco Gang, it's me, Warren, and today I'm going to try and show you how we're going to attempt to migrate a package from V8 to V9, uh, or Netcore version. So uh, let's try and jump in, and I'm going to try and do this uh, in one take, unedited, so uh, let's see how this goes. Come on, let's take a look. Okay, so I've got some tunes on, and... Um, Let's, uh, let's jump in. So I have a V8 project. It's a, a small package that I don't think I ever released, to be honest. Uh, but let's uh, jump in and take a look at what we've got currently. So it is a class library and some tests. And uh, I won't worry about the tests today or for now. And yep, it is basically a composer and a component in V8, and then um, a class. Uh, so let's, let's just start from uh, the composer and then kind of work our way down. So yeah, the, the, the composer component pattern that we know in V8. Um, so this is going to run um, only on uh, when Umbraco is kind of booted and running, so it's not uh, when it's installing, it's not when it's upgrading. Um, it's then going to append the component, uh, uh, yeah, component class. <laughs> I was obviously very original with my name in here. Um, and then what was we doing in here? Um, obviously, <coughs> excuse me. Um, then yes, we are setting up some. Uh, background task here so task uh, is a new clean room and we set up the the runner the background task runner um, and the delay how long we're going to delay before we start iteration so every minute this is going to run and then it's going to run after that every other minute until the site stops or needs to restart and then it'll boot up again so we can take a look at what clean room does so clean room uh, inherits from a class in Umbraco called Umbraco Web Scheduling Dot Recurring Task Base, and that base class is expecting uh, the background task runner that we obviously injected, uh, and the delay, uh, and how often we repeat. And then I've got some kind of trivial code this is maybe not the most smartest package in the world but what it what it does is that um, obviously every minute is then going to check if there's anything in the recycle bin if there is just empty it out for me just like keep it nice and clean just take out the trash um, so with that out of the way let's ask yeah let's, let's try and migrate this so I had kind of made one step um, but I won't have to do that maybe some others uh, you you will may need to do is that my project for v8 was the new style SDK style um, CS proj so it's a lot simpler obviously you can hear um, project SDK um, it's set to Microsoft.net SDK the target framework is net 472 and then this was all for just NuGet packagey stuff um, and then it's just the NuGet reference here um, so package reference so rather than a, a NuGet or packages.config uh, that you may know uh, we've now got a package reference so let us um, I need to then uh, go to the web and then on our umbraco.com, we've got a page for the .NET Core uh, project currently that's obviously uh, in alpha. Uh, but from here, I am going to need to add a new NuGet source. Um, and for anyone who then clones my project, I want them to be able to just uh, restore the package easily and not having to run this command. So we're going to add a NuGet.config. That's what that's what we're going to do first. So at the source, um, we are going to create a new file and it's a nuget.config and 
yes and let's um, open and, oh. and here's one kind of I semi made earlier uh, so yeah this is just a general nougat.config and then packages sources we can just add a, a nice key to say that this is nougat core uh, pre-releases and this was the URL from the documentation so if I save this and then put Visual Studio code out the way for a bit and then I'm thinking does Visual Studio need to reboot or is it that smart that it's just gonna pick it up straight away let's find out um, so I want to browse looks like it's picked it up maybe that was uh, impressive so from here you can see all the kind of um, yeah net core projects that are currently uh, being released or the nightlies or the alphas uh, you see we've got one for static assets SQL CE new cache examine lots of different things because uh, the pattern now uh, from Microsoft is that ideally one assembly per NuGet package and then you have kind of uh, other NuGet packages uh, which are cast as uh, meta packages I think that is the term which is basically just a package that references all these other singular packages um, so I think I remember which one I need uh, which is uh, umbraco cms .web back office it includes the yeah just looking at this the core the infrastructure and some other bits and pieces so let us uh, do, 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 do. let's uninstall first be a good uh, citizen well then save then we're gonna go and uh, install umbraco.cms.web.common and then we're going to install it and then we're going to go OK and now we're going to get a load of build errors oh hang on here we go maybe not uh, some build well, well we're getting some build errors because obviously we've now removed the NuGet references but look in here, the package restored failed, rolling back. Um, Broco CMS web.common is not compatible with net 472. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, the package supports net 5.0. Um, okay, yeah. Well, let's do that then. Let's change our CS project. And I think uh, I have to, I'll have to Google this. Maybe I've got it here, bookmarked. Um, so they, there's monikers, so to speak. Uh, so these are the, the things that we can copy here. So obviously there was net 472, which were, is what I had here. And obviously we want one for, uh, what was it, net 50. So there's net core app 112. We'll take this net 50. That's looking good. Well, uh, We'll take that and update the CS proj. Then we'll try and reinstall it again. So it's nice to just show some of these uh, problems or things that I'm encountering along the way, at least showing uh, maybe these are some of the things that you might run into. So yeah, we're going to install this now. And it's telling me, no, this wasn't the right one, was it? It's, this is way too many dependencies. Good thing I checked. Uh, let's cancel that. Uh, this is going to catch me out then. So it wasn't cms.web.website. It's cms.web.backoffice. That's the one. That's the one I want. This, well, there's still a ton of stuff, but I don't think it is as... Uh, as much as uh, the rest. I'm going to accept the licenses and then we're going to see if we get any errors from my output window package manager 
successfully installed all seems good we're we're making some progress let's go so yeah we can update and or save the CS prod you can see it's added a package reference and let's start with what file should we try and change first uh, I think maybe we'll start similar in terms of the, let's try and get this uh, component um, updated so let's do all enter you can see okay there's uh, the using or the namespace has changed so it looks like it was umbraco.core.composing before and now it's uh, umbraco.cms.core.composing so yeah we can do that make that happy that's that's one thing can we can we uh, all enter our way to success let's find out uh, using umbraco.cms.core.login yeah we like this so far good good same again what about background task runner okay don't think that is a thing anymore okay so I'm not sure if make yeah well let's save that because I'm not sure if we're gonna need the component uh, because the way that Embraco works is that it picks up all the composers and also registers them with its lovely voodoo magic which it does um, so maybe let's save that there and um, yeah let's, let's move back so let's see can we again all enter uh, oh I would have thought that was already in the package as a well the meta package that was already being pulled in but we can definitely definitely install it or maybe and bracket let's just dot cms dot core dot composing that looks happier um, and then umbraco dot cms dot core mm, okay not quite um, I know I've, I've had some pointers from Biaka so I'm not gonna pretend that I, I know that um, or surprised that some of this stuff is gone so yeah I know for a fact that runtime level uh, attribute is no longer a thing so let's get rid of that and let's just comment this out and let's re-implement the interface rather than um, so it's an I and Broco builder as opposed to a composition now okay so we could uh, do builder and let's see what we've got in builder builder look, well, we've got add composers add configuration cache refreshes oh look we've got components so I suppose I could components and append and then I could do append the uh, the component like before uh, this is totally possible uh, however speaking to uh, Bianca and some of the other uh, people on the development team they're saying it's not the best or the most newest or the best way to kind of deal with things just because this is more um, uh, Umbraco magic so to speak so what they recommend uh, in the net, net core land is um, in startup classes uh, of a, a, a net core site and net core and Braco sites um, you have configure services and here uh, the service collection is where you things like add add MVC add Embraco, add Embraco back office um, and maybe uh, maybe I want to follow the same pattern I want to add I can't remember what I called this package add take out the trash package so maybe it should be like uh, that. that that's that's what we want to get to um, so let's uh, leave it like that 
and then let's let's create a new class and we will call this he says oh yeah I remember now from my on my notes, uh, service collection extensions, because it's, it's going to be an extension method. So uh, public static class, and then we are going to have a public static i service collection. Let's all enter, yeah. So yeah. Uh, Microsoft's uh, dependency injection stuff and we're gonna call it add take out the trash package and then it's gonna extend or yeah the extension method is gonna be on the I service collection and then for now let's just get it to return Oh, helps if I actually give it a variable name. Uh, let's actually just get it to return the same collection for now. Um, get rid of a load of unusings. Cool. So then our composer, let's update the reference here. Why? Ah, oh, because this is the builder, uh, the um, I am Brocco builder, and maybe it doesn't make sense sense to add it to the builder because this is I suppose umbra very umbraco specific in terms of like uh, adding cache refreshes and components and content apps I suppose I could have extended I am Barco builder here but maybe it makes more sense for people who are more familiar with uh, netcore that this kind of stuff is discoverable on the service collection so we can get to the services collection uh, I know from builder.services and then here there you can see uh, add take out the trash package so we can do that and we can get rid of that for now because that was just really old code and then obviously older way that does more uh, voodoo and braco magic uh, we want less magic, don't we? We want, we really want to know what's going on, um, and try and follow similar patterns uh, that the Netcore um, projects are most likely doing these days. So, with that being said, we now need to uh, port the the kind of the background task runner. Uh, so when the so when Embraco boots. The I user composer is going to automatically do its thing. Uh, this is the only way that uh, an Umbraco zip package would be able to auto set up uh, the services and add things to collections, similar to how we do today in V8. So you have a composer that does the voodoo magic. Um, if it was just a NuGet package, then you would kind of try and avoid this user composer altogether. Because the best practice or the, uh, the most uh, um, common way to deal with this is that, yeah, you append, like I said before, you append stuff to this service collection. So in your startup class, when you're doing configure services, you would just be like uh, services dot add take out the trash package. So again, this is all just doing what we'd potentially do in the startup class, but as uh, an Umbraco zip package can't modify the startup class for people, hence we need this magic voodoo way to auto magically register it. So that's what that's what we're doing. That's the approach we're taking. Um, so uh, add to services. Cool. Then we need to we need to take a look at this. Um, and we are just gonna for now comment it out just so I've got something to at least uh, fall back on. And uh, I just got to remember from my notes uh, what class that we need to inherit from. 
because it's changed. And it is, uh, this is the one. So in Embraco now, there is this base class called Recurring Hosted Service Base. And then if you've done anything with um, uh, Netcore, uh, you know that hosted service is a, is a new thing in terms of Netcore. Um, and this is just the same thing as our background task runner that we had previously in B8. Um, it's, yeah. It allows us to recur, recurrently repeat something the same time over and over again. Um, anyway, enough jibber jabber. Uh, let's implement the interface. So, okay, it just has uh, one thing that we need to implement. Fine. Uh, we'll get rid of. Now um, we'll keep him around just in case I need to remember. And then what are we going to do? So we're then going to move our logic, as much of our logic, into it. And then see what needs updating. And then let's uncomment. Uh, let's comment back. Uh, right. A lot of unhappy stuff. Um, now... This is uh, an async task. Obviously, I don't need to uh, return true or false uh, anymore, so we don't need uh, necessarily these. Get rid of these. Um, and let's start injecting stuff. Let's create, what are we? What is it complaining? Uh, yeah, we can generate a constructor. Yes, please. So the period and the delay. So how not all code pass return a value. Mm. Okay, well, uh, we'll pick that up in a minute. Let's, uh, let's inject stuff because that's what I was where my brain was going. Uh, things like runtime and the logger and the content service. So let's uh, inject all those. So um, what was it before? It was an I profiling logger, but I think it's just I logger, and then we pass in a class, and we'll call this uh, logger, and. Or enter our way to success. Uh, extensions, Microsoft extensions. Login. Yep, that looks good. And then we're going to have a logger that is equal to. <coughs> excuse me, logger. And then we'll again or enter. Perfect. Good. Next thing. Let's take a look. What do we need to do to change these login methods? Logger dot. Okay, so rather than debug, it's log debug. Fine. And works similar way um, as our R logger uh, in V8. So we can still give it a message template and then pass in uh, parameters to replace it for to make Siri log and that kind of structured login still work. So that's all good. Uh, not that this did any by the looks of it. Nope. So we can just copy our string and then get rid of that. Right. So we're a little bit closer. Uh, and then we're going to do log debug again. And then. Right. What about trace duration? Logger dot. Log trace. Begin scope. Formats the message and creates a scope. Log, log critical. No, okay. Well, uh, oh. We'll come back to that. Let's uh, get the content service. So, I content service is content service. Service. 
or enter using in brackets here messed up call at services yes that sounds good content service equals content service so you can see so far hopefully this isn't too daunting i know my package is not huge but so far it's not been nothing too major um and hopefully you've been able to follow along in terms of the changes that have changed from v8 to v9 so we've got the content service why is this not having recycle bin smells have we not got this method anymore okay it's an extension method that's been moved into a namespace called uh, umbraco.extensions let's add that then perfect and the empty recycle bin uh, is still around cool um, And I do wrap every parameter just so it looks a tiny bit neater. <clears throat> right. Uh, we'll get onto the red squigglies in a second. I know the next one that we can inject is uh, I server, not registration. I think it's I server role. Accessor, have I spelled that right? Soon find out. Using Embraco CMS.core.sync. Perfect. So this allows us to get the, the server role uh, from the runtime. And we'll just, rather than call it runtime, we'll. Oh, missing my equals. Or enter, generate field. Right. So in the switch. So in server role accessor, we can get the current server role. Is there anything else useful in here? No, nope, that is literally all it is used for. Perfect. And I assume this is still the enum as before. We'll soon find out if this freaks. And it fall from one case label to another. Hmm, okay. You're probably all shouting at me what the super obvious is, but obviously I can't see it. Uh, let's take these out. And then let's see if why is that unhappy? Can it control fall through from one case label to another? Uh, it would help. <laughs> if I actually return. Knew it would be something super obvious. And we can probably make this an async task. Is that the right? Now what's the Yeah but okay, so it's complaining that I've got no awaits because there's nothing to run I think okay yeah not a not big deal for now you just want to get something working then we can code clean up or whatever another time goal of it is to get this to compile and get it to run um, so that all looks good So the the trace. So I I will see if I've got any notes in regards to trace duration. Uh, let's just quickly. Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, so I profiling logger is still a thing. Just having a, a quick lose. So well profiling logger and I don't like this being called server role accessor. 
This feels weird. A bit too. Uh... Too weird for me, anyway. I don't know why. Just don't like the name of it. So, how about underscore profiling? Haven't set it up yet. That would be right. Sense profiling logger equals profiling logger. Okay, so that's exactly the same. The profiling logger is the same. Let's just double check this. So we've got debug duration, trace duration, but the in terms of using profiler logger at the same time to do the log messages for debug, let's move down into the iLogger, uh, the implementation from Microsoft. So let's go with that. All good. I think we're good. I think we're good. So let's get rid of uh, unnecessary using statements. Now the goal of this now is to, when we call our extension method, we need to do something with it. So we need to register it in the services. And we could, I'm just getting some notes because uh, I'm. this is not cemented in my head just yet. But, um, so we could, uh, services, there we go, add hosted service because, uh, if we just quickly jump back to clean room, and recurring hosted service base from uh, Umbraco, if we F12 into that, and yep, yeah, okay, except the decompiler warning. You can see this is an I hosted service that that implements. Perfect, okay. So then add in hosted service. Uh, assume we can give it a type from memory, yep. Yeah, so then we can probably just do clean room and be done, that's it. So when we called out this, uh, when the composer uh, automatically registers, um, it's then gonna add, or call this extension method. And this extension method is gonna register this hosted service, which is in our case, the background task stuff in V8 or V9. Um, so that looks good. So, What have we got in here? So we've got some defaults. So apart from that, we can, because all this is doing, <clears throat> excuse me, all this was doing is that the composer was then calling the component and then the component was then initializing the background task runner. Okay, doesn't look like we need any of this anymore. So we can uh, just delete it. Let's get, let's get rid of it. I don't want it no more. So I've just looked at the time uh, or the timer. So we've been going for about 30 ish minutes again. So this is not, not taking too long so far. Um, I suppose uh, we're going to clean room. Maybe we would like to actually set some defaults. Yeah, we could. So this could be um, rather than passing some in, we'll just set, I don't know, a new time span, we'll just be lazy for now, new time span, and it's going to be take 20 seconds before the first, it's going to run every 20 seconds, sorry. And then the delay is the second parameter. I'm going to give it a new time span, and it's going to be only take 10 seconds for the first iteration to kick in. 
after the site boots up. Right, let's add some breakpoints. And then let's add a test site. Let's see, let's see how far we've got. So uh, if we just go back to uh, <coughs> our page on um, R and Broco. Yeah, we're on here. There is here we go. .NET new templates. I've already got these installed, and with .NET new templates. Uh, there's a setting in Visual Studio, which I'll quickly show. Um, maybe if I can just do .NET New, does that come up? Uh, here we go, it's this one down here. So in under Options and Preview Features. And then there is one that is... Da, 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 da. Where is it gone? Show all .NET Core templates in the new project dialog. And it requires a restart. So make sure this is turned on. And then with those .NET new templates installed from uh, the documentation, uh, so like here, so .NET new install the template pack, and then we will get um, a new product type. So here you can see I've got an Umbraco solution and Umbraco package. For me, uh, it's just solution, which is just a website basically. Uh, we'll call this test website and yeah it's gonna use .NET 5 as opposed to .NET 6 why not let's go crazy let's use SQL CE because I can't be bothered to set up SQL Server for now and let's just get this site up and running before we add the project reference to the example site. So that's built. We're then just going to hit F5. Let IS do its thing. Ah, so this is the SSL thing, and I think this is just something on my machine, I believe. So I know that. Uh, let's just double check that. that under properties, launch settings, SSL port is 5001, IS Express, uh, is on 5000, yep, so we can just connect to that, and we could also probably just turn off um, SSL, so in here, under I suppose where it's running, it's not too heavy. And here we can then go to. Do, 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 do. It's not build events, is it? Where does it live? I've uh, totally forgotten. Debug, here we go. Uh, so the IIS Express uh, profile. So obviously there's the test website, which is a cache server, but we'll use IIS Express. And uh, for now, just turn off SSL. And then we'll save that. Ah, so that's what it does. So it just sets SSL port to zero. That's all I needed to do. Now I know for next time. Um, so yeah, if I F five or press play, then let's uh, get the site going. So hopefully this has not been a too painful journey that you've come along with me so far. Uh, you can see that most of it has been relatively trivial. Uh, the things that I've had to learn about in this case, um, uh, SQL C, is obviously been to do with the change from uh, trying to use this uh, services to register or create our own uh, extension method to register stuff and then register the I hosted service, which is um, what the new recurring host service base uh, now implements under the hood. Um, and this recurring hosted service base is what has changed in V8 to V9. So that was, that was the big thing. Um, rest of it was just namespaces and then just trying to find out where stuff lived. So server role was now I server role accessor. Um, 
and then the logger, I needed an iLogger, uh, passing in the type to the Microsoft uh, implementation. And then we've got an iProfiling logger, which is the, exactly the same, but the iProfiling logger didn't have like log, uh, the debug and the info and warning and error uh, that we know. So that's now moved away into iLogger. Uh, content service was the same. Uh, again, it was just extension methods, wasn't it? So, so far, that's, uh, it's not been too bad. All right, what is it complaining about? Yes, so this still catches me out every time. I have to restart because uh, the site needed to reboot because it changed the connection string. So we then have to F5 and start again. Um, one of those things that I'll just have to get used to. So let's just make sure I can log in. It was Warren and it was my super secret password of password 1234. I don't want the tour for now. Okay, uh, let's just create some doc types. Um, yeah, okay. Um, I'll make a super boring one that is called page and it has got content and then it's just got a header. That is a text string and is allowed at the root and let's save that and then update the template uh, so it's h1 at model not capital M model dot header perfect so let's quickly create page um hello hello people save and publish view the page i clearly done it wrong didn't i that's always embarrassing isn't it never mind let's uh see if i can it's big m it always catches me out i think Little M is for specifying the actual model that you want to use, isn't it? I think. Yeah, there we go. So it's big M. Big M, not little M. Um, so, next thing to do is to stop this. And I'm going to add our project reference. So, right click. Uh, dependencies, add project reference. We're going to add project reference to take out the trash class library. And then let us add some breakpoints. So in the compose and then in the extension method. Yeah, that looks good. And then in clean room. We've got a breakpoint for when it wants to try and run every 20 seconds after the first 10 seconds. So, I know, that, yeah, just thinking about what we have deleted uh, and quickly skimming through some of my older notes or some of my notes here is that I think we have need to no I, I yes okay that's what that's what we needed to do in clean room um we in the um, the component, didn't we? On the component, we had a runtime level attribute, and we can check the runtime level in this recurring task. So that would make sense, wouldn't it? So let's do that. So it's an I runtime state. Oh, thankfully, uh, IntelliSense is the day to save me there. Runtime state underscore runtime state equals runtime state. And then we can oh, 
So if the well runtime state um, not final, not the current migration, not going to configure. Uh, if the runtime state level is not equal to uh, not booted, uh, run. So we only want to do this uh, when it runs. Then if it's not any, of, if it's not the run level, so it's booting, it's installing, it's upgrading or it can't determine for whatever reason, then it's just going to exit out early. So, yeah, there we go. We've now re-implemented that kind of attribute that we deleted. So we can save that. Then I think it's now good to go to fire up the site, see what happens. Okay, my uh, my lovely page is shown. That was clearly longer than Why are we not getting, well not currently, no symbols have been loaded for this document. Okay, is it because I didn't build? Maybe, that's fine, yeah. I'm guessing, that's why. Let's double check now. Still not gonna load the symbols. Odd, odd, odd. Let's do a rebuild. Not that makes much different, I believe, but and it was I could have sworn I added the project reference. Maybe not then. That would be why it's not loading. Now we can rebuild and do all that. And now we're going to obviously hit our debug, point, debug break points. So, compose, yes, sorry, the user composer kicks in. Okay, so I've just found out that the same key bind in F10, so obviously step step through uh, is the same key binding uh, for my lovely screen recording uh, software so let's uh, let's um, let's use the buttons for now um, so this is calling our extension method and it's going to add our clean room service and then we can just F5 or continue Again, I probably won't use the keyboard. Probably end my recording again. Yikes. Um, so, oh, there we go. So we can now see that this got registered. It got run after, yes, say 10 or 20 seconds, whenever I've set it up here. And you can check the runtime state level. Yep, it's set to run. So this is going to go through. What's our current server role? Unknown. Let's not run on servers with unknown rel. Oh, but we'll come around and hit again. Still unknown. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Single. Uh, maybe a 10 or 20 second. Uh, is maybe a bit too keen and it's not quite figured out what the server role is just yet uh, as probably it's probably a bit low uh, maybe I should yeah set it a little bit higher anyway uh, we can check if the recycle bin has got anything I know that it hasn't so let's just continue and let's 
Put a break point here and let's get rid of this one. So we now this kind of at least registers and is kind of calling itself. Um, let's stop and let's modify a few things. So a delay, let's give it 45 seconds and then I don't know, repeat every minute. Maybe that might be a little bit nicer. And just trying to think, is there anything else? Yes, we're gonna uh, we're actually gonna test to see if this actually deletes something, aren't we? Um, so let's run the site again. Remove that breakpoint, can I? And continue. Yep. Yeah, and again, it's just adding it to the collection of stuff of services into the, the container. Cool, we can then, let's go to the back office. No, it's not, ends with dot, ends with forward slash. And then let's, not unpublish, delete page. So now we've got one page in the recycle bin. So the next time our iteration goes round, which is going to be a minute by the seems of it, because I've set it high. Um, yeah, obviously in a, a real world scenario, if you was ever to use this kind of package or code, yeah, I don't think you really want your recycle bin emptying out every minute. That might be a bit annoying for your end users. However, maybe if you set it to every 48 hours or something, that might be a little bit different or once a week. Um, that might be something a little bit useful, but yeah, we have hit the breakpoint because yeah, it knows there's something in the recycle bin, and then I'm not going to hit F10 on the keyboard and stop the, the screen recording this time. I'm going to use the button, and now that that's performed, we can uh, let's continue, and then let's refresh. Or reload the recycle bin. Ta-da! It's gone. So we've managed to pull our package from V8 to V9, and it works. Um, there's a couple of things I could do to improve, but I noticed that we're probably getting close to the hour mark, um, and maybe it's best to save it for another video. Is that we could try and introduce some configuration um, for how often this repeats and how often uh, or the, the the first delay before it runs uh, so these these two properties here these two time spans it would make sense if there was we could configure it um, but for now we'll leave it there uh, hopefully uh, you've managed to follow along and uh, see the process that I've done and see the same stumbling blocks that I've come across um, enjoy have fun hacking and I look forward to seeing more of your v9 packages being ported over have fun. Any questions, get in touch. Cheers. Bye.